Good evening and welcome to the Destination Imagination Colorado new team manager training. I am really excited to have you guys um, on board and listening to this webinar. We are recording this webinar for future use as well as the PowerPoint will be up online. Um, everybody is currently on mute in order to um, in order to answer questions um, into the um, into the webinar, please feel free to just type your question into the question box, and I will answer it as um, as they come up. Um, just to make sure we're all going in okay, um, can you get, what you should be looking at is um, a screen that says Destination Imagination Colorado New Team Manager Training. It should be filling up most of the screen. Do, um, if you have that image, if that's what you're seeing, could you please just type in the question box the word yes. Great. So it sounds like you can all hear me and um, that you can see the image. So we're going to go on from here. Um, we are expecting about uh, 50 people on this call this evening and we are also um, expecting people from Wyoming and Washington and California. So um, while this new team manager training is designed specifically for Destination Imagination Colorado team managers, um, the information that I'm going to be giving is um, um, the information I'm going to be seeing. Okay, just a second. I'm just making sure everyone's seeing the right thing. Okay, that should fix the. <clears throat> those people that couldn't see it, I think you can probably see it now. I'm hoping. Um, okay, so, um, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I got off, off, off my topic. So if you are from a different affiliate, if you are from a different state, um, you can just take the Colorado specific only parts, just go ahead and um, don't pay attention to, but 90% of this is uh, for all Destination Imagination team managers. All right. Normally, when we do this presentation live, uh, we do it to um, emulate and practice what good team managers do. So we always start off with a challenge. So you can give this challenge to your students where they build a model with some materials of a, a, of a building that they would share with their uh, city council. So. Um, in general, you give them 10 minutes and they, you know, normally I give them some plates and some paper plates and some cups and some um, forks and knives and spoons, sort of like a pic, you know, empty out your picnic basket of plastic and paper cups, spoons, plates, um, etc. And they will uh, build a model. So if I was doing this live, I would give you guys about 10 minutes to build a model in a team. Now, <clears throat> I'm, you're going to have to take my word for this because I've done this activity so many, many, many times and it happens, it works out the same way, especially with adults every time. So the purpose of this is number one, to get your team warmed up. And so that's why we do it at the start of team manager training is to sort of get you guys um, ready to um, be in the DI frame of mind. And then the second thing you want to do with this activity, um, when, the, when, the, when the second thing you want to do with the activity is when you are um, doing it, you're going to use it as a learning experience. So let's just say like just imagine that you've sort of made a model of something for your city and um, you've made it out of cups and plates and things and you're going to talk to your team about um, number one how did the team work 
what kind of good workmanship, how did they get all the, all the elements done in, in a, such a short amount of time? So talk about that with your team. And then you want to think about different locations for your city. In the original brief for the challenge, we never said that it was a, a, it was a people city. Um, but I will tell you, 99 out of 100 times, every single adult make it, makes it a human-sized city um, and with solving human problems. Um, which is all fine. Normally we get a lot of creative use of materials and we get some great um, um, concepts of buildings of the future. But think about with your students if you do this activity, could they have done it in outer space or underwater or on a dandelion? Ask them if they had even begun to think about those types of things. Ask them if they had changed the materials to be more effective. Did they fold, rip the plates? Um, did they do anything with the forks, knives, or spoons to make them any different? Did they um, did they cut holes out of the out of cups? Um, did they make any? Did they use any straws to make it taller? Those types of things. And then, how did you um, how did your team? Uh, how did your teamwork change to do the performance element? And then how does practicing performance help you in your job or school? So you can sort of see when you start doing instant challenge with your kids that you are going to want to debrief with them the challenge and then push their creativity a little bit more. So that's what we normally do when um, when the when um, when it came out, um, I'm getting some messages that are you are having a hard time hearing me. Is that still true? Or are you guys all good? Can you type in if you can hear me? I don't. Okay, so <clears throat> because we're on. Um, uh, webinar. Sometimes the sound will go in and out, not very often, but sometimes it might just if people are using um, the computers in your home or my home. Okay. All right. So that's how you start with um, Instant Challenge. So the mission of DI Colorado is to prepare Colorado's kids to be the innovators of the future by combining the arts, sciences, and technology with creativity, teamwork, and problem solving. You can find us at www.colorado.com. And I'm going to show you some, um, I'm changing this over so you can see. So this is the Colorado Destination Imagination um, page. There's a lot of really great things on this page um, to help you. Your biggest item is either going to be in this team help button right here, which is also the same, it links to the same page as this resources button. When you click on the resources button, you're going to find a list of resources that we have um, assembled just for you to help you be the best team managers you can be. We have our links to all of our team manager trainings. Um, our next one is on Saturday. We have a link to all the webinars. So after this webinar is completed, you're instead of saying here where it says click here to view or register, it's going to say click here to view so you'll be able to repeat this webinar. Um, if you want to see about the challenges, all the challenges are here. You can reach your challenge masters by clicking on any of them there. Um, you can click on their team manager presentation. Um, if it's up and available, and if you're, um, the, if there's any additional handouts, we have them all listed. So you can see that there's a lot on this page, and just go to your um, training presentation, and you can find information. We also have a team manager guide. This team manager guide was written by a team manager um, in the Boulder area, and he wrote a step-to-step -step guide for getting started as a new team manager. It's a great guide. Um, you can see how long it is. It's super great. Um, it's from his perspective. Um, it's from his perspective, and um, I have put some information in there from my perspective as well, but it's just one person's guide. 
And then he has different appendices. He also has a video. Uh, he has a video that attaches to it so you can see it. And then he also wrote a white paper on why DI is so great. So all that's there. All great resources for you. We have an instant challenge page where we have examples of instant challenges. Um, and then we have our Destination Imagination Colorado YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel, we have um, all kinds of information. We have um, the, imp the improv webinar that we've already done. We have um, some team performances. We have some marketing videos. There's all kinds of really great things on this video. And this presentation will be up there tomorrow. Sorry. Um, we also have um, our Destination Imagination YouTube channel from the National Office, which also has a lot of really great information. Um, finally, we have information on how to get your background check, which we'll be go over, going over shortly. And then we also have the DI Information Resource page, which has tons of information and resources for team managers. So we have tried to put this all in one page for you, um, for your team manager page. The other page that you're going to want is this page under the tab Regions. Under the tab Regions, you will look and you will find out about your region. This one's Cherry Creek. And you can see, um, you can get in touch with your regional directors. You'll be able to see your schedule. They'll have a, a registration page up here shortly. So all that is available for you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on resources? Um, so I do have a question if we'll have access to the slides. Yes, they will be on um, the webinar page. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. We're on Destination at Colorado Destination Imagination on Facebook. We post a ton of information on our Facebook page and it is really updated like three or four times a week. So make sure you like us um, and there'll be information there for you. All right, so um, I'm not sure how the sound is going to go on this. Um, so let me know because you guys know more things than I, you can hear me better than I know what's going on. So we're going to start. This is um, an example of a destination imagination challenge. This challenge is, um, was, it was um, taken place at Global Finals last year. It was in the scientific challenge. It involved the art of camouflage and the science of camouflage. And this team is a senior level team and they won third place in global finals. So I just want to show you a little bit about what that looks like.
Okay, so um, I'm not sure what sound was coming across on that, uh, but that is available on our YouTube channel. As you can see, this is a secondary level challenge. These are seniors in high school. They won third place in global finals. They um, are terrific. You can see how well their scenery is, how complete artistic it is and that's basically what I wanted to show you was sort of what a destination imagination challenge looks like lots of new team managers come into destination imagination and they're not even sure what sort of the scale of what they're looking at so I just wanted to show you just a little clip um, of that of that piece again that is available completely on our YouTube channel for you to watch in its entirety this next clip, and again, I'm only going to show like a minute of it at the most, is the same challenge done by an elementary school at their regional tournament. All right, so again, I'm not sure what you can hear um, on those clips, but I wanted to show you that this clip, again, was an elementary school um, in the same challenge. You can see that they have their DI t-shirts on. They have some costuming on with their, um, with their jellyfish hats that they made, and they have a fairly simple backdrop. They do have some um, hiding in plain sight characters with their jellyfish or their starfish right here that is being... Um, camouflaged and they also have some um, activity being camouflaged over in this area so again I urge you to watch these two they're on our YouTube channel um, where you can adjust the sound to your own specifications these are last year's challenges but again the point in showing these to you is to show you um, the real big breadth of sorry the, the big breadth of ability and um, level from an elementary level team on up. So we're not looking at Destination Imagination for, you know, super polished performances, although the more you practice, that's going to help. Um, but we're looking for creativity. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what drives Destination Imagination? Destination Imagination, as we said, we're trying to educate the innovators of the future. So we're doing this by teaching 21st century skills. Um, we are also doing this by um, allowing students to generate all the ideas that take place in their solution. We also uh, make sure that it's student driven in that the students get to present their um, own goals and they get to decide what the finished product is. So many times in um, a lot of school activities, the students actually don't have direct control. Parents take over um, a lot of times. Um, sometimes, um, you know, the kids don't get to have their own ideas and their own goals in place. But in Destination Imagination, we really believe that DI should be student driven. And DI is student presented. Students present um, all the performance aspects of the challenge. Destination Imagination is geared toward finding students' talents and strengths. Each of our challenges is written to have multiple components. Each of these components um, uh, 
emphasize different talents, whether they be technical, writing, artistic, or performance skills, you need a whole team of people with very different skills in order to meet the goals of the challenge. The reason why Destination, Imagination, and Challenges are written like this is in order to uh, make sure that every student gets to shine in their own way and to work on developing talents and strengths. And finally, the last guiding principle of the DI philosophy is that we don't believe in adult interference, which we'll talk about in a moment. So there is a lot of confusion about destination imagination and um, adult interference, and so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about it. These students are, you know, seven, eight, nine year olds, and even at their oldest, 17 or 18 years old, they are still developing and learning all kinds of information about teamwork and about their own um, capacity to learn. So we are not expecting the teams to solve these challenges 100% by themselves. We need your assistance. You are allowed to guide them to make sure that they're following the path that they set for themselves. Um, you are allowed to mentor them. <laughs> you are allowed to help them um, overcome some teamwork issues. You're allowed to help them learn project management. You can also teach them. You can teach them how to sew, how to be a project manager, how to write a script. You can teach them how to weld, um, and you can teach them how to plan. Um, all of those items a team manager can and should do. The almost the largest question that I get in my office in um, February is that. Uh, we haven't decided a team yet. We haven't decided what our characters are going to be. And I don't know what to do because I can't interfere. That's a question I get often. I want to assure you that giving kids direct um, deadlines and timelines and holding them responsible for their own outcome is completely in your purview as a team manager. So you are more than welcome to say, hey guys, you said that you were going to choose main characters or the characters in your story today, we need to hold you to that. That is def that's teaching them project management and it's teaching them how to plan. What you may not do, and this is where interference comes in, is you may not create their presentation that they put on stage. So if they choose to make <clears throat> costumes out of newspaper that they've woven together into fabric, um, and you and you sat one night in front of the TV and you wove the fabric. That is not that is interference. Um, the students can do that by themselves. If you feel if the kids want to cut two by fours with a skill saw and you feel that they have safe tool use, they should be able to do that. Um, if you feel that that's unsafe for them to do, that doesn't mean you can do it. It means that the students have to find a way that is safe and age appropriate. You cannot interpret for them. You cannot help them write, you know, decide ideas. All the ideas and all the doing are up to the kids. You are there to help um, hold them to their project plan and you are there to help them make their um, planning process come through. Does anyone have any questions about interference? At any time, if you have any questions, just feel free to write them in the question box and I will answer them. <clears throat> so this, um, this uh, graphic depicts the DI process in sort of a visual form. Um, at the beginning of the process, which is actually down here at the bottom, um, team managers can help. And that's sort of recognizing what the problem is, what the challenge is. Um, that sort of um, recognizing, you know, reading the challenge, understanding what the challenge is all about. Then the kids really take over and they do um, go into the imagination stage of the process. When you get your team materials, 
there are many, many resources in your roadmap that help um, imagine and expand your, your the creative thinking process. The first stage in the imagination process is to, it's called divergent thinking, and it's to come up with as many ideas as possible. You want to think of 30, 40, 50 ideas, and there's lots of ways to help your kids increase the amount of ideas that they have, and those are all in the roadmap, which you should get with your team materials and your team number. The next thing that you're going to do is, once you start imagining, then you're going to start to put some decision-making constraints on on your on all those um, 50, 60 ideas that you have, you're going to start putting on some constraints. What are the good ideas and, and the not so good ideas? Um, what ideas can we actually accomplish with the skill set we have? Do we need to learn additional skill sets to get some of these ideas done? Do we have enough time to get these done? Um, and will it fit? Does it match the needs of the challenge? And does it match the needs of getting it actually to a venue? After you do that, and again, there's lots of tools in the roadmap that are going to help you with those sorts of assessments. Then you're going to do initiate, which is actually getting stuff done. So if you decided that you were going to build um, an eight-foot Yeti out of paper mache, and you decide to make this, the actual initiation process is where that actually takes place. Maybe a couple of weeks down the line, you go to the next stage, which is to assess, wow, eight feet of paper mache is a lot of paper mache. Do we, is it working? Is it what we wanted it to look like? Um, do we want to start over? Do we want to change our parameters? That's when you start going around this circle again and again and again, and the circle gets faster and smaller as you go through this process. Um, once you decide, what, once everything is done and you assess that it looks great, so your, five, your eight foot Yeti turned into a four foot Yeti of paper mache and it looks all scary and exactly how you wanted it, then you go to, um, you pass out of this um, trial and error phase and you go to a public evaluation stage, which we call our tournament. Um, and then finally the celebration. Um, phase. You always want to celebrate different milestones as the year progresses. Destination imagination is a fairly long process and you want to make sure if you've come to a really good stopping point where you've accomplished X, Y, and Z by a certain date to celebrate. Bring, bring some ice cream in to your team meeting <clears throat> or, um, or something like that and really celebrate. All right. Any questions? All right. <clears throat> Destination imagination is consists of two components. The first component is the team challenge. This is one of seven challenges that your students will choose from. There is um, technical, scientific, fine arts, improv, engineering, and, and service learning. Those are all competitive um, and anybody may compete in any of those challenges. You'll be competing against students at your appropriate grade level. Elementary students um, compete against elementary students, middle level kids um, against middle school kids, and those high school students have their own division. Um, we also have a challenge that we do called Rising Stars. Our Rising Stars is for our written specifically for our five, six, and seven-year-olds, K-1-2, and it is a non-competitive challenge introducing these students to the, to the destination imagination process. These students are perfectly free to choose um, these are perfectly choose, free to choose a competitive challenge, but other teams, older teams, are not allowed to choose the Rising Stars. The Rising Stars is specifically for them. If you have a kindergarten or first grade team, I highly suggest you start out with the Rising Stars challenge. Um, second grade teams, I think you are, either type of challenge, I think is good for you. Okay. <clears throat> um, 
The second um, component of Destination Imagination is called the Instant Challenge. The Instant Challenge is new at every tournament. And what's so great about the Instant Challenge is this is the place where you can really interfere and teach at practice, not at the tournament. So when you are practicing instant challenges in your team practice, feel free to help them solve the challenge. Feel free to teach them precisely how you would solve the challenge. Feel free to tell them how materials work, that bigger things and stable things are better on the bottom. Um, talk about their teamwork. Um, all these things in Instant Challenge you're, you are completely allowed to talk about and to teach. Instant Challenge is a great way to teach um, some skills that they need for their central challenge when you, cannot, when you are not interfering. We have, on Saturday, we have a live team manager training where we're going to be going over each of these challenges and Instant Challenge. And then in the afternoon, we have a segment about how to use Instant Challenge to teach Central Challenge skills. So if you're able to come to this Saturday's training at Inglewood High School, I think you would get a lot out of it. Our instant challenge, you should practice at every single team meeting. Um, you're going to be, especially when you get into February, feeling a time constraint on getting your central challenge complete. Um, I urge you to always start your activity, um, your team meeting, with an instant challenge to make sure you're practicing all different kinds of instant challenges. I showed you where there were some instant challenges on our website. There are 16 instant challenges in the roadmap, and on the Destination Imagination resource page, you, there's also um, where you downloaded your team materials. There's also an instant challenge pack. So there's lots of places to practice and get instant challenges. So please, please, please practice instant challenge. All right, so I have a question from um, a team manager whose who her question is this. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a bit of a cold. Um, I will be managing a third, fourth grade team. It seems like the imagination phase of the process is intensely management specific. Is this covered in the materials? So yes, number one, in the, in the roadmap, um, the destination imagination training materials are going to walk you through um, how to do idea generation and how to do idea um, selection and, and to some idea focusing. It is perfectly okay for you as the team manager to teach these processes as well as to keep the team on track. So you are more than welcome to say, you know, we need to figure out um, this part today. What you are not allowed to say is, hey, Joey, you're going to be this character and Susie, you're going to wear this and this is your story. Um, not any of the, you are not allowed to help with the creative aspect, but you're allowed to help teach them how to get to the creative aspect. Um, I have a question about where to get the roadmap. So, um, at some point in the destination imagination process, you will receive program materials. These are either purchased through your building coordinator or a district representative or a parent on, at your school. Every school does it a little bit differently. But once you have your team number, you will be able to access your materials. And I'm going to show you where those are. So if you go to the Destination Imagination page, the Destination Imagination website, and you click on this login button right here, you'll be asked to set up um, an account. I already have one. And then you're going to go into documents. I know I have more documents in my folder than you'll have in yours um, because of different privileges. But you're going to go to these challenge materials. And then you're going to click on program materials. And the roadmap is right here. So you can download the roadmap. You, if you ordered um, hard copies of the roadmap, your building coordinator or your school secretary or whoever purchased those materials will be able to hand you the roadmap. But this is where it is located once you have digital access. To get digital access, you need your team number. 
This is also where you're going to get your instant challenge practice, another set of instant challenge practice sets. Um, again, there's um, challenges also in your roadmap. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Excuse me. I'm used to doing this live. <laughs> Um, so I hope that answered your question on where to get the roadmap. So we're back to our presentation. <clears throat> so one of um, the biggest issues that team managers have is how to work with students. A lot of our a lot of our team managers are not teachers, and so some of these. Um, tricks and tips for working with students are really very helpful. Um, if you are a teacher, a lot of this stuff you have probably learned throughout your career. But the first thing you want to do is establish norms for student behavior. One of the first activities in the roadmap is to actually create um, is actually to create an uh, a behavior a behavior list. We um, will only talk when we're holding the talking stick. We will be at every practice. Um, we will be respectful. Um, things like that. Have the students develop the list and of course you need to add to them too. If they're at your house you may have some house rules that you need to establish. We will only be working in the basement, garage, wherever. Um, you uh, you may only eat food brought in by um, for di etc. I always mention that one because when I was team managing uh, my middle school son and his friends, they ate our dinner once. So after that, we made sure to put on um, the co code of the rules of behavior that you know the only food that they could eat was di food. Remember that it's their team. One of the unique aspects of Destination Imagination is that it is student driven. <clears throat> and the students, while we want you to try to hold them to their um, goals and their objectives, um, we want that it's the, it, they need to know that it's their team so that they need to hold each other accountable for actions as well. Talk to everybody about interference. In the um, Roadmap. There is an interference contract, and I think it's in um, it's it's fairly near the beginning of the book. And you should have your students and your parents be very aware of what interference is and isn't. Again, we don't want those students to come home from your house, and when their parents ask, "What did they do at DI?" We don't want the kids to say. Um, oh, I can't tell you anything that happened, it's a secret. That's not the point. The point is they're more than welcome to talk about it, but the parents have to be very aware that they may not share ideas. It's very easy for the engineer sitting at the dinner table to um, help solve the problem and solve the challenge, but that's not, um, again, it's a student solution. Be prepared for setbacks and restarts. This is completely normal. The first year that I managed a team that um, was a technical team, um, <clears throat> we had to build a machine that kept time. And my students, my teammates, they started um, by, they decided they would make sort of like a game timer. And but it was it was huge. It was like uh, four feet tall, and they decided to use playground sand. So we put this whole machine that they developed together to make playground sand, and of course it didn't work because playground sand isn't uniform. And then they went to store bought sand, and of course that didn't work because again it wasn't wasn't uniform enough. And then they went to sugar, but then we had a really wet day, and then the sugar all clumped up. And then they finally got to water. This process literally took us um, all of December and all of January to figure out. So just be prepared for setbacks um, and restarts. It's perfectly normal. Um, teach them about time management. Um, <clears throat> You know, students, especially the younger students are, have very little concept of time, and time moves really slowly for younger students. 
they are thinking that the winter holidays are so far away and can't even bear to wait one more day while we as adults are desperately trying to get um, things ready uh, for for these winter events so you know teach them about time management use some of the tools in the roadmap to teach them about um, you know assigning tasks to certain people in certain times have a plan. Um, the best advice that I can give you as team managers is to have a plan preparing <clears throat> preparing students for what their day, their time is going to be. If they have decided that they're going to be painting trees, be prepared to have all the material there to paint trees. Um, <clears throat> have more than you planned, so in case they finish the trees and they want to move on to something else, you have that also ready. But um, but in reality, they probably will get less done than you think, especially the younger the student. Um, be prepared to work with students of various learning styles. You're probably most accustomed to working with your own child and how um, behavior and norms are expected in your own family. You're going to be working with six other kids that belong to other families and they might have different social norms. So again, that goes back to establishing norms for behavior at the beginning, but also be prepared um, to work with kids that may be more introverted or extroverted um, or may, um, may really like concrete decision making and we'll go over all that a little bit later. All right, I lost my reading glasses. Um, okay, and then help your team set goals. What is their goal for this tournament season? If you are a first year team, which I'm assuming most of you are, maybe your goal is to just have something ready um, that meets the specifications of the challenge for your district tournament. That is a terrific goal. Um, if you're a Rising Stars team, maybe your goal is to have a play written and um, that everybody has a part in, and that's terrific. Um, some people come into their Destination Imagination season wanting to win first place at Global Finals. That is also a very um, good goal to have, but all of these goals are valued and they're all um, appropriate for whatever level your team is at and just work to help them keep the goal. So again, if your team has a goal of making it to state, but only half of the team comes to half of the practices, well, then you know, you're going to have to have a meeting with your team to talk about what work ethic is, is required to get to the goal that they want. I have a question, is it better to have meetings at our school or at home or on the weekends um, or after school? So the answer to that question is either all of the above and none of the above. What works for the team manager has to work for the team. Um, when my husband was a team manager, he works a nine to five job. So we actually had our team meetings between seven and 9.30 at night with a fourth and a fifth grade team. Um, <clears throat> it worked really well for our team. They went home, had a snack, um, did their homework, had dinner, and then came to our house and they were ready to work on DI. Many, many teams work directly after school um, and start and maybe work for two hours um, in the school um, right after school. That is also, if that's what works for you, um, then that's also perfectly, it's going to work just fine. Having, a, having um, your DI practice at your home, you, you it has some pros in it in that you don't have to move um, equipment back and forth, you probably have better storage facilities than at a school, but you're also probably going to get paint on carpet and Gorilla Glue on your drapes. Um, if you meet at the school, you might have to carry stuff back and forth to the school, but you're also on school property which has its own benefits. So whatever works for you as a team manager um, and your school district. There are several school districts that do not allow DI to happen um, off premises. I think that's Boulder Valley Schools, Thompson Valley Schools, and District 20 schools. Um, all right. <clears throat> There 
are lots of parents on your team. And um, I'm sure when you took over being a team manager, lots of people said to you, oh, I'll do anything if you be the team manager. Well, this is what, here is where they come in. Every team is required to provide an appraiser. The appraiser trainings are on January 21st and February 11th. They're just morning trainings. And then um, they can go to any of the tournaments in, the, um, in February or March. They do not have to be appraisers at your own student's tournament. They can appraise at a different tournament. But we do require each team to provide one trained appraiser. Some regions also require an additional volunteer. The reason why is that it takes about 100 volunteers to put on a Destination Imagination tournament. And, um, and um, we really need the help of parents to make our program work smoothly and, and, and um, fairly throughout the whole state. And we, uh, you can also use parent help and them being the IC parent. Maybe they're the ones that figure out what the instant challenge is for the week and bring the materials. Um, you can also have someone bringing the supplies in or bringing the snack or being a driver. So all of those roles can be filled by teams. Don't feel like you have to do it yourself. All right. I have another question um, on our question board, but it has to do with this slide. So um, the question is, as team managers, do we have a budget or do we pay for all the materials ourselves or does DHI help with the costs? So um, DI does not help with the cost. We are a very, very small nonprofit organization. And um, um, we have, uh, the, it is up to the team to provide the materials that they use to solve the challenge. <clears throat> Every Destination Imagination challenge has, <coughs> excuse me, has um, a budget of items that can be on stage. We do this so you can't purchase your solution. So most solutions come um, less than $200, mostly about $150. Um, you should be very aware of the cost constraints on your challenge. Um, but you sometimes you pay a little bit more for that because, if, for instance, if you are purchasing a gallon of paint at the, at the store, but you only use a quarter of that um, on your presentation, only a quarter of that has to go on your expense report, but you obviously have to buy the whole gallon of paint at the hardware store. So, um, so there's always money that's going to be for materials. So in general, this, the cost of a team membership is about between $90 and $150, depending on what type of membership you've purchased. On average, team supplies cost about $250 to $300. Improv is on the very low end of that scale. Engineering is on the higher end. Regional tournament fees range from zero to $100, depending on which region you're in. Regional tournament fees are dependent upon um, on how much support <laughs> we get from school districts. Um, I'm sorry, t-shirts are optional, but they're generally about 15, not 150, about 15 to 20 dollars for a team member. So in general, it probably costs about um, between 93 and 100 dollars per team member. Um, you as a team manager do not have to pay for all that. Sometimes your GT department or your activities department will pay for your membership. Sometimes your PTA will pay that. Um, otherwise, you're going to be collecting money from parents. It's not your job as the team manager to finance this whole endeavor. So you can um, collect money up front, have everybody pay maybe $25 at the beginning, and then um, in January another $25, and then in February another $25. So you can do it that way. Um, how you manage the money is sort of up to you, um, but that's about how much it's going to cost. Um, I have a question. If you have supplies donated by a parent or a business, does that need to report be reported on the expense sheet? It certainly does. <clears throat> um, you need to report it at at least a garage sale value. 
um, or at a cost value if it's brand new and donated to you. The rules of filling out the expense report are basically how someone else would um, and what someone else would have to pay to create that challenge. So we would love for you to get it donated and then it's of course less cost to you and your team, but you need to account for it on your expense report. Does anyone have any other questions on expenses? Um, okay, so our question is, does a team manager add expense items or does a team member have to manage that? So again, that would be very um, dependent on the age of the team. If you have, you know, seven-year-olds doing the expense report, I would definitely make sure that they were being supervised by an adult. If you have a high school or a middle-level team, um, they should be able to um, keep receipts and do some accounting for you. It's another thing that they can learn. It's not interference to do the expense report. Um, it says, can a business donate funds to sponsor a team? You bet. If you want to ask your local, your insurance agent or your dentist or your orthodontist um, <clears throat> to support your team, by all means, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I have a question on determining garage sale value. <clears throat> in the rules of the road, um, which is um, also in your program materials, there is a whole page on how to determine garage sale price. But basically, if you went to Goodwill or garage sale, how much would you buy that t-shirt or um, for? So a couple bucks, you know, we had a question about um, a dresser. So, you know, if it was that was donated by Habitat for Humanity, just, you know, sort of go to a thrift store and sort of get an idea. As long as your solution looks like it's within the parameters um, of the of the expense, um, you're not, you know, you're going to be reasonable. You just have to be, the, the reason why we have this rule is so people don't go out and purchase a solution. It's to keep the playing field level. Okay, the, well, the next question is where is the finance report? So in January on the electronic, um, well, well it's number one, it's in your program materials. It should be in your the rules of the road. Number two, it will be available electronically and in fillable PDF form in January or February on the resource page of Destination Imagination. Um, and then you turn in the finance report, your declaration of independence, and your tournament data forms, all which are available in your um, in your challenge materials and all will be available with fillable PDFs in February. Um, and those are due at tournament. Um, a question about appraisers. Appraisers only, there's many opportunities for appraisers. Um, they only need to do one training event. The live trainings in the Denver metro area are January 21st and uh, February 11th, I think. Um, they're on our calendar. Uh, rising stars do not need to turn in expense reports. So you guys get a break there. All right. I just want to go over some child safety really quickly. All Destination Imagination Colorado team managers are required to have a background check. Um, you can fulfill this in a multiple ways. If you are a teacher or a district employee, send us your district badge, <clears throat> just a photocopy of it, and that would be our picture of it on your, off your phone, that would be fine. You can check with your district, Denver Public Schools, and um, Boulder Valley Schools and Thompson Valley Schools all require fingerprinting background checks for any volunteer in the building. Um, I know Denver Public Schools pays for that service for all of their team managers. So make sure if you have a district, um, if you have a district service, please use it. Always check with your district first. Um, if you are a Cherry Creek or Aurora or Brighton, um, I believe you have Raptor badges. Anytime you have to scan in your Raptor badge 
with your driver's license that will also count as a background check for destination imagination. If none of those work, and none of those will work if you're in Jefferson County Schools, you need to go to Verified Volunteers. The, the link is on our website off our resources page, and you will have to pay $22 to get a background check. If you already do, um, if you already work with verified volunteers for your church group or your Girl Scout group or another children's services group, you can also share your current background check with us. Um, when you are working with children, you want to have either two adults or at least two children present at all times. Sometimes this isn't possible if you're the only team manager. If that is the case, make sure you have an open door policy. Um, when you are driving, always have at least two kids with you. Um, don't just have one other person's kid. You need to have it, you know, your kid and someone else's kid. You may not have someone else's kid and you. Those can't be the only two people in the car. Um, <clears throat> please no texting or phone calls when you're driving other people's children. If you are in your own home, you should have homeowners or renters insurance to cover any liability or accidents that might happen. Um, you might, oops, I'm sorry, um, <clears throat> when you are using tools or transportation, make sure that the other parents know. Um, so if the other parents don't want their four-year-old to weld, um, you need to respect that. And please remember that safety is never interference. If any activity is deemed unsafe, please stop the activity. Um, and have the kids figure out another way to do the solve the challenge. Um, rising stars again don't have um, <clears throat> expense reports. And recycled materials are generally um, uh, are, are viewed as trash items. Um, another question, can a spouse help a manager move materials, etc., from time to time, and would he or she need to get a background check? No, as long as one background checked individual is with um, the kids, you're good to go. Um, once your background check is complete, please send it to rob at dicolorado.org. Um, I do not know the background check policy actually for Douglas County, but district um, district badges will work, or, or so I know that will work for you, Janelle. I'm, I'm not I'm not 100% sure about the Douglas County background check policy. I think that D Douglas County does do background checks, um, but you should check with your school. Um, so child privacy, uh, will their names and pictures be posted online without parent permission? So when you do Destination Imagination, when you sign up for the tournament, you actually sign a waiver um, that any image that we take um, can be used. And the reason why, like you can even see on this, on this image that's on the screen right now, there are so many people in there we couldn't get you know, if one of those people had said that we couldn't use their photo in order for us to track that, would be extraordinarily difficult. Um, so we don't put names of, we don't have names of students readily available um, at all for, on any public site. Um, and the videos in, that we use on our website are generally approved or sent to us by the team manager. If you have a particular um, if you have a particular question or concern about that that we need to address, you should just email me at kate at dicolorado.com um, and we can address that individually. <clears throat> um, we have another question about appraisers. Do we find our own appraiser or is that a person appointed to my team? So your team is responsible for finding an appraiser. So that is maybe another parent on your team. It might be a relative of someone on your team, like a grandparent. It could be a teacher or a friend. But you are responsible for finding that volunteer. We don't we don't have them. Well, we, we have a group of volunteers, don't get me wrong. We have a quite extensive list of volunteers, but we always need more. All right. 
So we sort of answered these questions already, but I'll go through them briefly. Um, team managers, team meetings should fit the needs of the team manager and the goals set by the team. If your team goal is to have a great time and to have a finished product at tournament, terrific. You may only need to meet um, two hours a week. If your goal is to be first place at global finals, well, I guarantee you, you need more time than that. Again, <clears throat> we're not telling you what goal to fix. This is a process organization. While we do have a competition at the end, and there are winners that move on to different levels of competition, we're going to honor whatever commitment your student makes. So um, the appraisers are trained to be very respectful of every team that comes through. Team meetings can be after school in the evenings or on the weekends, whatever works for you. On average, teams meet for 16 weeks, an average of two hours per week, and that's just an average team. Um, but you, need, you may need to increase practices as your tournament gets closer. As I said earlier, if you're going to spend some time painting a set, building an eight-foot Yeti out of paper mache, you might need some more Saturday sessions that aren't planning sessions, but are just sessions just to get a lot of painting done. To bring paint to a school and to paint and to clean up the paint can take quite a bit of time. <clears throat> okay. Use the tools and the roadmap to help your team's planning process. There are calendars and there are responsibility charts in the roadmap. We're Destination Imagination Colorado, well, Destination Imagination Incorporated is sponsored by the Project Management Institute, um, and they have um, developed a lot of materials for team managers to use to help guide team managers through the process. <clears throat> Set hard deadlines. We need to choose our challenge this meeting. By the end of 10 minutes, we need to have um, somebody assigned to write the story. Don't be afraid to step in and set those hard deadlines and hold your students accountable. And please help your students to understand the time constraints. Again, students, young students are, are notoriously horrible at um, time management because time goes at a different pace for them. All right. When you are teaching about teamwork, you're going to run into some team conflict. We want you to understand that team conflict is natural and it is necessary. If everybody agreed on the first idea, you would hardly have um, a, a very creative solution. But make sure you're um, teaching your kids to present ideas in a positive and constructive manner and not a destructive manner. So <clears throat> try to make the, the conversations about the issue you're trying to solve and not about personalities. And DI meetings are for DI. They're not for conflicts that erupted at school or at home. All right, so as I've mentioned before, you have your roadmap. You have me and I have a plethora of trainers to help you. Please, 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 if you have any concerns or if you have any um, <clears throat> questions, my email is kate at dicolorado.com and um, I want you to use that um, to ask me anything or call me at 720-542-3600. And I will be happy to talk to you. Or I will get you in touch with the right person. Um, we have our website and our resource page. And I showed you, and we have, a, again, a training opportunity this Saturday. So be aware that there's, there's ways we want to help you. All right. Now, at our live training, <clears throat> We normally break into different places, so, um, and I'm not going to have time to do all of the information, but I wanted to run through this slideshow really quickly. I'm sorry, my voice is getting tired as well. Are you guys okay? Is everybody happy out there? Does anybody have any questions?
Okay, <clears throat> so a couple of things before I start this next question. Um, yes, this record this uh, webinar has been recorded. It will be up on our webinar page tomorrow. Um, I'm going to talk about diffusing personality conflicts in a moment. Um, and then if you cannot attend the live training on Saturday, please go to our webinar page. Um, we will be having live webinars on every challenge. We've already hosted one on improv and on Thursday night is the technical. They have also all been recorded. So if they, if they haven't happened yet, you can click to register um, on the webinar page of our website. And if you have, um, if they have happened, you can watch the, the video. So we have that all um, queued up for you. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about teamwork. Because teamwork is a really tough, um, a really tough item. So there are I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen this before. There are many components of team building. The first stage in team building is forming, which focuses on relationships and relationship building. The second part is called storming. It's when um, you might have more conflict than not, but you're also focusing on the process. <clears throat> um, what are some processes in place to help diffuse conflict? What are some processes to move forward through conflict, et cetera? When you're in the norming stage, you're focusing on the results. Hey, we got to get this done. We know the processes. We know how we relate to other people. So let's just move forward and get it done. And then if you're a really high performing team, you're going to be focusing on all of that at once. So in the forming stage, you're getting to know each other, create shared experiences, and make decisions that have little to no consequences. Some of these decisions can be forming a team name, making a team sign, um, deciding the snack schedule. These decisions really have no consequence, but it helps create um, a sense of team. When you're creating shared experiences, do some fun things at your, at your meetings. Do some ice-breaking games that you can look up online. Um, play, uh, you know, play some improv games. If you have the time and the resources, go see a play or a movie together or go bowling. Um, create just some shared memories to make your team work stronger. If you don't have those types of time or resources, then do really crazy things at your team, at your team manager, at your team training, like having a meeting in a tent one day, or um, having everybody switch shoes or something like that. So you're creating some bonding shared experiences. Um, in your roadmap, there is a, an inventory guide of talents. That's a great way to get to know each other. So have their team fill that out and talk about it. All right, when you're starting to go through the storming phase, you need to establish processes and procedures that help get you through conflict. How are you going to resolve conflict? Um, and part of that is by establishing timelines and responsibilities. So when, when, you're, when you decide on a script, you need a timeline for that script, and you also need someone to be responsible for that. Um, you also want to talk about tolerance and acceptance of members' differences, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk more about all of these these particular things in a moment. So I don't want to spend too much time on it now. When you're norming, you're making your progress toward goals. Keep people aware of calendars, planning tools, and your um, norms for behavior so that everybody can be moving forward to getting your challenge completed. And then when you're at your highest performing level, um, use teamwork to help you through some challenging issues and make sure your team always remains respectful of each other. <laughs> All right, so um, Destination Imagination uses what's called the VIEW. It's a personality assessment um, that has three um, access, accesses on them. 
So the first one is called the orientation to change. I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called. And there's two um, diametrically opposed parameters on this scale. One is that you're an explorer. If you are an explorer, you're like, you're going to venture into new and uncharted territory. You're going to break ground. You're always thinking about new things. You're always going, um, oh, the next new idea. You're excited about, um, you know, just generating ideas after ideas. You always are coming up with new things. If you're a developer, you like to work in a paradigm. You like to have some constraints. And you're actually generally very good at doing um, <clears throat> rules and procedures, and you're good at planning. Now you're going to have, I personally am a developer and my husband is an explorer. Um, oops, I'm sorry, my screen isn't showing right. I'm so sorry, guys. I think it should be now. I hope so. Um, is that better? Are you guys all seeing the slides now? Okay, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> um, all right, so, um, and you need the two types of personalities to work together. If, if you don't have those types of personalities working together, explorers need to be constrained at some point, and developers need people to help them break out. So talk about these kinds of parameters at your team meeting, and talk about why you need both that will start to give respect for each other. The second um, <clears throat> scale that have two diametrically opposed ideas is called manner of processing. Um, there are external processors who talk right away. They're the ooh, 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 me, me, me kids or adults because I am also one of those. Um, they revise and reform and reformulate ideas as they are talking, and they share ideas freely. <clears throat> Internal processors need time to think. They like to share ideas after they've built some trust, <clears throat> and they like to have careful consideration before they share ideas. So how do you get these two types of people to work together? Well, there's different brainstorming and idea generation tools that can really help do this. So number one, you have your standard verbal brainstorming. This is really helpful to external processors. They love verbal brainstorming. They'll start to generate ideas off of ideas that are created, and they're going to be very excited. Um, this is the death of internal processors. They hate this type of brainstorming. They feel generally, um, <clears throat> they don't have time to develop ideas in their head before they talk. So sometimes use verbal brainstorming. It's not that you shouldn't use it, it's that you probably should mix it up. The second idea is to use an idea generation chart. And that is basically brain writing, where you are, <laughs> you give kids a topic and you give them um, a chart and they fill in all of the all of the areas on the on the chart this is really good for internal processors they like to see their ideas in writing they can take time to think they're not um, they're not um, inundated with external noise and they have time to think. So again, sometimes use verbal brainstorming, sometimes use an idea or generation chart. ABC brainstorming is where if you're thinking of a main character, you, you use to have one that starts with every letter of the alphabet. You can do this both to help external and internal processors by either doing a written format or, um, or, or shouting out in turn. Um, beach ball brainstorming is really great, again, for those external processors. You just throw a beach ball around the circle and whoever has the beach ball has to come up with an idea. And then mind spin is a really great um, internal processing tool <coughs> where everybody writes an idea down on a card and then passes a card down to their left. And um, so 
as you get cards, you're going to see more and more ideas on a card, and those are going to generate more ideas. So try to mix and match all these idea generation tools together, um, and that way you're going to help your internal and external processors both get some say. And then the final parameters is ways of deciding. <clears throat> There's two ways of deciding. One is called the personal way, where you are sensitive to others and you seek solutions that everybody will like. You're a consensus builder. <clears throat> The other way of deciding is if you are if you decide by task. This is logical and rational. You have objective criteria and judgments are impersonal. So there are different ways of deciding that fit both of these types of people. <clears throat> Number one is building consensus. Building consensus isn't that everybody likes the answer, it's that everybody can live with the answer. So Talk to your kids about developing consensus. They may not get their first choice idea, but they might, but they shouldn't get their last choice idea. Um, there's always voting. Um, voting tends to have winners and losers. That consensus doesn't, but voting is very fast. Um, kids love voting. I don't always think it's the best way, but it is a way. Um, some other ways of deciding that are in your roadmap is called paired comparison. This is to help those kids that like objective measures to, um, to make a decision. So you're going to compare choice A with choice B, choice A with choice C, choice A with choice D, and then all the other combinations. So B with C, B with D, and then C with D. And then you're going to come up with um, a number. So for instance, if you have um, space as setting space under the sea, um, in, a micros in a microscope, um, in my body, you're going to compare, do I like space better than I like ocean, or do I like space better than I like on a microscope, or do I like space better than I like um, in my body, and you'll, you'll, you'll make a judgment. So that helps because it also takes ownership away from ideas because you're comparing two ideas directly together. In, in choice helper, you actually use objective criteria. For instance, you, you may decide as a team that your criteria is that you want something to be um, unique, funny, um, and large. And then you will assign a value to those, like a number 1 through 10, and you'll say, oh, is a clown um, unique? Is a clown funny? Is a clown, I don't remember my third one I said, <clears throat> and you'll give numbers. All these are explained with, with, in more detail in your roadmap. I just wanted to let you know that those are there. All right. Um, my voice is getting very tired. I normally do this with, with several other people. Um, I'm happy to answer any more questions that you guys have. Um, and I hope this was helpful to you. Again, please go back online to watch those videos. I think you'll really like watching them or any video we have online that shows sort of what a DI performance looks like. So unless anybody has any questions that I can answer for them, um, that is the end of our presentation for tonight. But I'm here for questions, um, and again, this will be recorded, what is recording, and we will have it online tomorrow. Um, okay, so the question is, will this training on Saturday be similar to this webinar? Not at all. The training on Saturday is, tra is challenge training, so it's training on specific challenges. So if you're doing the technical challenge or the scientific challenge, you'll meet with those challenge masters and training on instant challenge. In the afternoon, we have um, a storytelling class, we have a class on instant challenges, how to read a challenge. So it's a completely 100% different material than, than this um, training. <clears throat> the teamwork slides will be up um, online tomorrow um, on, the, on the team manager resources page.
I have a question of does the team manager choose the challenge or does the kids? In an ideal world, the kid should choose the challenge. Um, is there a time frame for the challenge training on Saturday? Um, there's an agenda online and um, they, so, yeah, so yes, they have happen at the same time, so you do have to choose one. We do have a class available that does a brief overview of all seven challenges at once if you haven't decided. Um, the challenge on the training on Saturday is not recorded, but all the individual challenge webinars will be recorded and put online. Um, you do not need to show up. Uh, you can. You do not need to register for the training on Saturday. Just show up. We'll have coffee and donuts there for you. Um, I have a question about Rising Stars that I'm not sure what the question is. It says Rising Stars Challenger is given to them. I don't know what you mean, Annette. Can you ask me, um, explain that question to me? Um, the challenge webinars are a repeat of Saturday's material. So if you can't attend Saturday, please view a webinar. <clears throat> okay, the agenda for Saturday is... On the DI Colorado page, resources, team manager training, <clears throat> team, it's right there. So <clears throat> it's on the team manager resources page. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So you can see. Um, there's some, that's what the challenge, what it looks like. It's about, you bring your own lunch. All right. Um, okay, so the Rising Stars Challenge is actually a specific challenge. Um, and you can, um, you should get, it's called Rising Stars, and um, I can't remember, um, they have a challenge, they have a, a training on that on Saturday, um, and it's the one, it's, it's a specific challenge, so it should be in your challenge materials called, and it's called Rising Stars. All right. Well, if anyone doesn't, if you don't have any questions, we'll call it a night. I thank you very much for your time, and I wish you good luck. And please let me know if I can help you in any way. Thank you.